Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today we're going to be doing a Dark Magician deck profile. So this is an awesome deck that basically plays one of the most nostalgic monsters in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! in the form of Dark Magician, which is a really awesome card that was actually one of the cards that got me into Yu-Gi-Oh! back a long time ago. And I am really excited to do this one for you guys because this is actually probably one of my favorite decks in my entire collection of decks and is a really, really awesome deck. So without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below because we have all those awesome awards you guys, like getting your name scripts for every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, or even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your patron along with test hands. So, without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Dark Magician, which is the ultimate wizard in terms of attack, defense, and nostalgia. Now this is an awesome card that basically is the entire focus of the deck because you have so many combo pieces in the deck that actually focus around the Dark Magician, which is a really awesome card. It's not even that bad because it's a 2500 beat stick that you can summon to your field pretty much instantaneously with cards like Eternal Soul and a bunch of other cards that you have in the deck and is the main focal point of a lot of your fusion monsters. We then play a single copy of Red Eyes Black Dragon. This card is in the deck basically just so you can summon your copy of Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, but it's still a really awesome card to be able to summon in your deck, and you can actually summon this card as well, which is kind of crazy. We then play a single copy of Dark Magician Girl. So you got to play a single copy of Dark Magician Girl in this deck, because what this card does is basically it increases its attack points by 300 for every copy of Dark Magician or Magician of Black Chaos in your graveyard or in your opponent's graveyard. So this card can get pretty big on its own and is a really good card and a combo piece in the deck, especially for the copies of the Dark Magicians. We then play three copies of Apprentice Illusion Magician. So Apprentice Illusion Magician to me is always a three of in the deck, especially with some of the combos that I have in this deck to be able to get two monsters on my side of the field to go in for an Anaconda, to go into my copy of Red Eyes Dark Dragoons, or any of the other fusion monsters that I particularly need. So what this card does is you can special summon this card from your hand by discarding a card, and if this card is special summon, you get to add a Dark Magician from your deck to your hand. And then during damage calculation, if a Dark Spellcaster type monster you control battles, you can send this card from your field to the graveyard or your hand to the graveyard, and it's a quick effect to be able to make that Spellcaster type monster gain 2,000 attack and defense, which is really cool during the damage calculation only. We then play three copies of Keeper of Dragon Magic. Now usually you're only going into fusion plays anyways in this deck, but this card is really amazing because if this card is normal or special summon, you get to discard a card to add one polymerization normal spell or fusion spell from your deck to your hand. And then it also has the ability that you can reveal a monster in your extra deck, such as the Dark Magicians, to be able to special summon from your graveyard a card that's specifically listed on that card. So for instance, if I have a Dark Magician girl in my graveyard or a Dark Magician in the graveyard, I can then special reveal this and then special summon a copy of a Dark Magician or Dark Magician girl from the graveyard face down in defense position, but I can't special summon any other monsters except for fusion monsters for the rest of the turn. We then play three copies of Magician's Rod. Magician's Rod is a really, really good card that's probably one of the best normal summons in the entire deck, that when this card is normal summon, you can add one spell or trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists this copy of Dark Magician in its text, which is a really good effect, and then uh, it also has the ability that during the opponent's turn, if a if a card, if you activate a spell or trap or effect while this card's in the graveyard, you can tribute a spellcaster type monster to add this card back to your hand, which is kind of a weird effect. I usually don't use that, but it comes up every so often if I need another search. We then play three copies of Magician's Soul. Magician's Soul is probably the best card in the entire deck. Now, I will say to you guys, if you don't want to play Magician's Souls, you can drop this card for three copies of Fusion Deployment. Now, Fusion Deployment is a totally good option for you guys if you want to play it over the copy of your Magician Souls because it is a more budget option and budget friendly option if you want to play it over that or you can play Jester Confi if you want to play that over that too because basically what I'm doing with this particular play and this particular lineup is you have the copies of your Apprentice Illusion Magician and you have the copies of Magician Soul. These two special summon themselves from your hand at any particular time. You also have the copies of your Keeper of Dragon Magic and your Magician's Rod. Those are your normal summons. So basically what you do is, is you use any combination of a normal summon and then a special summon to go into your Anaconda to then send your copy of Red Eyes Fusion from deck to graveyard to go into your copy of your Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, which is an extremely powerful card. But if you don't 
have that, then you can still go into your copy of Fusion deployment, but it is going to slow down going into your Anaconda plays for Dragoons. But that's totally okay if it's okay with you. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we are going to be playing a single copy of Call by the Grave, because Call by the Grave is going to be really, really good in this deck to be able to stop your opponent from all sorts of shenanigans that they might try and do against you with hand traps. One copy of Eye of Tamias, because this card lets you send a Dark Magician from your deck or from your field to the graveyard to be able to special summon any monster that special summons, or it's a fusion monster from your extra deck that lists the Dark Magician as a material, such as Dark Paladin, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, the Dark Magicians, any of your uh, Tamias fusions, like the Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, this card just has you covered for all sorts of different fusion plays. Play like a single copy of Polymerization because you search it off your copy of your Keeper of Dragon Magic, and it's really good to have the one of in the deck. One copy of Red Eyes Fusion because Red Eyes Fusion lets you fusion summon into your Dragoons extremely easily in the deck. One copy of Magical Eyes Fusion because you can go into Quintet Magician, you can go into the Dark Magicians, you can basically go into literally any monster in the extra deck using this card except for your copy of Dark Magician the Dragon Knight because Dark Magician the Dragon Knight is a dragon monster we then play a single copy of bond between teacher and student now this is a really good card in the deck and i really like this particular build that actually uses this a lot of people have kind of moved away from this card and i don't understand why it's just so good that if you control a dark magician you can special summon dark magician girl from your hand deck or graveyard and then you get to set one dark magic attack or dark burning magic from your deck to your side of the field or dark burning magic um attack or dark uh, magic twin burst directly from your deck which we do play dark burning magic which is an extremely powerful card this card can instantly just interrupt your opponent and board wipe them which is insane now what this card does is if you control a monster who's originally dark magician and dark magician girl you destroy all cards your opponent controls which is insanely good for this deck it's a really good disruption against your opponent just board wipe them with this card so i still love playing this card in the deck but if you don't want to play this you can drop this and the copy of bomb between teacher and student and play some more hand traps like three ash blossoms and bump the card bump the deck up by one more card we then play a single copy of dark magic attack now this card is a card that i would hands down never drop in the deck because you have the copy of eternal soul that can actually search it in the deck very easily if you don't have dark magician in your graveyard and can thin the deck out a little bit we then play two copies of secrets of dark magic secrets of dark magic is basically another fusion spell in the deck which basically uses if you're going to use a dark magician as a fusion material you can use this card as a quick play spell and you can even activate it during the battle phase which is really cool because it's a quick play to then fusion summon to go in for an additional otk against your opponent we then play three copies of soul servant so soul servant is really good because you play as a card from the top of your deck from your um from your um you place one card on the top of your deck from your hand deck or graveyard that is a dark magician or a card that specifically is dark magician or dark magician girl in its text except another copy of soul servant which is a really good effect now that is not a once per turn effect the once per turn effect on this card is during your main phase you can banish this card from your graveyard and then you draw cards equal to the number of paladinium monsters dark magician and or dark magician girls with different names in your field or in the graveyard which is pretty good usually you're going to get a draw two off this because you don't play any paladinium paladinium monsters i used to play paladinium oracle mahad and you can play that card in the deck if you want to i just personally don't because the, i play too many draw cards in the deck to be able to get him off correctly because if you draw him outside of your draw phase he's essentially a dead one of in your hand but he's still pretty good we then play three copies of uh the dark uh, magical circle dark magical circle lets you look at the top three cards of your deck and then add either a dark magician or a card that specifically lists dark magician in its text to your hand now the only card that you can't do any searching for i will mention off of both of these cards is your copy of eye of tamias so because it doesn't specifically list dark magician it's kind of weird with the ruling of it but you can't add that one that's the only one that you can't add we then play the three copies of dark magic circle also every single time you special summon out a copy of dark magician once per turn you get to banish a copy of a or banish a card off your opponent's side of the field which is pretty good to be able to just banish anything off their field now the really cool thing is the combination between soul servant and your copy of dark magical servant or dark magical circle because what you basically do is, is activate your copy of soul servant place any card you want to search out of the deck on top of the deck and then activate your copy of dark magical circle because you've already put it on top of the deck you then get to add it from your deck to your hand we then play for the last three spells we're going to be playing three copies of allure of darkness it just helps dig through the deck a little bit faster to be able to get the particular cards you need like your copy of magician soul your copy of your apprentice illusion magician any of those cards that you particularly need this card has you covered so 
that's it for the um, spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. Another thing that you might be able to do the deck if you really want to play Paladinium Oracle Mahad, because in the last video I had a lot of people saying, what would I drop? You could particularly drop a Secrets of Dark Magic if you wanted to, or you could drop a single copy of Apprentice Illusion Magician and play that card in the deck as well. That's just a total option for you. I don't because if I draw it outside the draw phase, it's a little dead. We then play a single copy of Magician's Navigation. I do like playing the one of Magician's Navigation because it lets you special summon a Dark Magician from your hand and then you can special summon a level 7 or lower Dark Spellcast type monster from your deck, which can be Dark Magician Girl. Literally on the card, like art, it shows you exactly what to do with this card. We then also, with this card, you can banish it from your graveyard except the turn it was sent there to be able to target a face-up spell or trap your opponent controls that has, and then you negate its effects, which is really good to out Mystic Mine. We then play a single copy of Magician's Combination. Magician's Combination is a neat card that I like to play as a one of because I search it when I need it and I don't when I don't need it. But basically what this card does is you can interchange out tributing a Dark Magician or a Dark Magician Girl to summon the other one when your opponent activates a card and then you negate the opponent's card, which is kind of neat. So if I have Dark Magician on my field, I flip Magician's Combination, my opponent then activates a card on the field. You can then tribute the Dark Magician to summon Dark Magician Girl and then you negate the opponent's card effect, which is kind of neat. We then play three copies of Eternal Soul. Eternal Soul is definitely a three of in this deck because every Dark Magician in your monster zone is unaffected by your opponent's card effects. And also, you can once per turn special summon a Dark Magician from your hand or graveyard, or add a Dark mag Magic attack from your deck to your hand, which is a really good effect to be able to grab from your deck to your hand. And also, it has the ability that if this card leaves the field, you destroy all monsters you control, which kind of sucks. It's the only downside to this card, but it's a really, really good effect overall. So, that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're going to be playing a single copy of the Dark Magicians. Dark Magicians is really easy to summon. You just use Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl or a Spellcaster type monster to summon this card. And then once per turn, if a Spell or Trap is activated, then you get to draw a card. And then if it was a Spell or Trap, you get to set it to your side of the field. If it's a Trap or a Quick Play, you can activate it the same turn it was set. And if this card is destroyed, you get to special summon a Dark Magician and a Dark Magician Girl from your hand deck or graveyard, which is pretty good just to kind of give you the replacement of them. So basically, they just split back into the two monsters like diffusion we then play a single copy of quintet magician quintet magician comes out very infrequently but when it does with the copy of your magicalized fusion you're going to go off with this card because it has the ability that if this card is fusion summoned using five spellcast trap monsters with different names you can destroy all cards your opponent controls they can't tribute this card nor use it as a fusion material and it cannot be destroyed by card effects either so they can't super poly this away they can't tribute it with the kaiju they have to swing over this card at 4500 or use a non-targeting banish effect to get rid of this card um, which is really amazing or a banish effect at all we did play a single copy of Dark Paladin. Dark Paladin is usually what I summon out with my copy of I of Tamias. We then play a single copy of Dark Magician the Dragon Knight, which is another copy of basically I use this with polymerization and my copy of um my copy of either I of Tamias. I summon this with I of Tamias, or I use it with polymerization with Keeper of Dragon Magic and a Dark Magician to summon this. It's really easy to get this card out on the field, but I just really think it's a one of now. Two copies of Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. I don't think this card speaks enough for itself. It's a walking negation, can pop two monsters on the field, and it can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects either. This card is insanely good, and it uh, inflicts damage to your opponent equal to the amount of the attack points of the monsters that this card bops. This card is really good as a two of. I really only think you need two i think two is fine for this deck we then play a single copy of ebon illusion magician because this card can special summon dark magician from the deck and when a dark magician battles it says normal spellcaster but it's always going to be a, no a dark magician you're going to be able to banish a card your opponent controls flare metal because every time your opponent breathes they're going to take 500 and the really cool thing is is if you summon out dragoons with red eyes fusion and then you summon this later in the game you can actually detach a material to summon your copy of your red eyes black dragon back from the graveyard with its effect we then play for the Link Monsters, a single copy of Access Code because you get multiple pops off this card, which you can change out for Boral Load or Boral Sword if you're going more budget build. A copy of Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians. Selene's really good because you can basically make a one card uh, or a two card access code talker because if you can make a link two, you can link from a link two into this and then this will basically walk right into a copy of access code because it'll special summon a spellcaster type monster from your graveyard. As long as you don't summon a copy of Dark, well, even if you special summon Dark Magician, you can still go into it because I have a card in the deck that'll get you there. Um, but what this card does is basically you put three counters on, or you put counters on it equal to the spells in the graveyard 
card are on the field. And then you can remove three spells to be spell counters to be able to special summon a spell cast from the graveyard. Nightmare Unicorn because it spins stuff. Phoenix because it can pop spells or traps. Anaconda because it summons your fusion monsters. Link Rebo because you can use it with your copies of your um, Magician's Souls to summon it out to your side of the field. And then be able to use its effect to be able to negate attacks basically. Or reduce the attack of a monster to zero. And then Emduk the World Chalice Dragon because you can use this to make a Dark Magician an effect monster. Because you can link the Dark Magician away, summon this. And then it also has the ability that if a monster it points to is battling this then it will destroy the monster instantly, which is pretty cool. I like the effect of Imduk, and I think it's better than the Link Spider that I used to play in this deck, because Link Spider doesn't have any targets to special summon, and this card can destroy a monster by battle. So... I think the Emduk is arguably a little bit better in the deck than the copy of your Link Spider. But that's it for the deck, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely tell what you think of this deck down in the comments down below. It's a really fun deck to play with. It is a little bit expensive to play if you guys want to play it. But if you want to go a little bit of a budget option, you could probably get away with one copy of Dragoons. You could drop the copies of Magician's Soul for your copy of your uh, Fusion Deployment. And then the rest of the deck should be fairly budget except for the magician's souls you ought to be able to get away with the rest of the deck for not the most expensive yeah you ought to be able to get right away with the rest of the main deck for pretty cheap so anyways guys this is dark Home duels don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on the screen comment bar notification squad and definitely check out the patreon down the description below and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys